Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Ben the Human Plays Vagris the Riven Realms. We're here at the Ocean Quarry and I'm here to pick up a body of a guy. So let's go, nope, never mind, let's go to the Bone Garden. <laughs> I was gonna say, let's go to the morgue. Well, that's where you keep bodies, right? Uh, show the novices your letter from the church. You are here to take the necromancer's corpse. I'm here. A group of grim-looking novices greet you and lead you to the chamber of strange and unaccountable demises. Apparently, it has also become the location of, of Operator Lucius Herculeus's demise, though there is no telling if it was strange or unaccountable. The ancient necromancer's corpse lies on an altar of sorts, or perhaps a workbench, wrapped in linen bandages drenched in embalming fluid. Still, you could not say with conviction that he looks worse than before. The novices tell you that they will accompany their former teacher on this journey to the temples of Devon. The master will gain his divine reward in the temples as befit his rank and achievements. We will now make the pre final preparations and take the remains to the Comitatus Vagris. Do not fret. A spell was placed on the body of the master, so it will not decay for many moons to come. It will hinder you not. We will also carry our own food and help out where we can if you want us to. You direct them to the Comitatus. They place the body in your cargo hold. We gained plus one necromancer's body, and the Oscolite retinue joins our comitatus. No thanks. Cool. I just realized I only have three days worth of food. <laughs> oh, I'm dumb. I didn't. I forgot to drop all this stuff off in uh, Torzeg Shelter. Well, let's head back that way. Uh, we can actually force march today too, because we actually got our stuff up high enough cool hopefully we don't get penalized for forgetting to drop off our stuff it's only like an extra week so that shouldn't be too too major I would love a random vigor generated so I don't have to do the camp trick don't look like they're going to be kind to me. We'll do it ourselves fine. Excuse me? A massive Jacques horde. Sure. I could get a lot of free food. Let's barricade it up. And then eliminate leaders. And then mount up however many make sense. 10, I guess. Fight. Begin! It's been a while since I've had some, some combat. Three out of three! Oops. Let's swap things around then. Excuse me. This isn't a fair fight. Six on three. Alright. Burn these two. Loud. Uh, and then just go to town. One down. Scornar, go ahead and buff your... Uh, sorcerer friend. Nice dodge. Missed me again. Haha, <laughs> nerds. Another one down. Axe this dude. Alright, three, three down. A bunch to go. Uh, axe this guy. No, he evaded me. Rude. Poke him. Nice. Two to go. Spread the damage around. I probably should have killed this guy, but Scornar's got him, and then maybe the poke will finish him off. Oh, he's got one HP left. Oh, and I finally took a damage. Oh, he burned to death. All right, three on six is a fair fight, I guess, this late in the game. Blam. Killed most of them. They took my slave! How could you? Four! <laughs> Pursue! Stop those people! Nope, they got away. Rough. Alright. Give them time. Oh, we got some of the people back. Some people did die, though. Alright, maybe we didn't get anybody back. We lost a Yurg, three fighters, two scouts, and four slaves. And Garrett got himself wounded. Fudge. Aw, oh, man, and we lost some cargo space, too. 
All right, well, whatever. It's because we lost that one random guy. New day promises to be an exhausting one. You took my 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 vigor that I just generated, you evil people. How could you do this to me? Into the city. All right. Look at that. We we still had days to spare. <laughs> Barely though. All right. Sell all this garbage. Get out of here. Now, we need to fix our, our stuff. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three. And one Yurg mount. Good. Exchange passengers. All right, we're heading to Devon after this, so... Let's put our people to work. Let's rest. Put them to work in the city. Nice. Critical success is great. Now, let's take stuff to go to Devon. Here's some illegal things. They're always smuggling stuff into Devon. What's what's up with Devon that they're like, time to smuggle, huh? Doesn't look like it can actually hide all the stuff in our inventory. Nine days. I think we'll have to get one more stack to make it there. Fantastic. All right, let's head out. We got a we got a body to to deliver, and then maybe we'll uh, depending on what happens, we'll come back and go s straight to the Bronze Desert. Oh, okay. Some uh, unexpected. You are suddenly woken up from fitful dreams and growl as the headache sets in. It is a mon it is monstrous and paired with a feeling of grogginess, far worse than those you got from bad sleep. You realize that one of your crew was shaken has shaken you awake and has been talking to you for some time, rubbing her temples. As her words begin to take shape, you realize what has happened. You were poisoned just like most of the crew. Her account of what happened reinforces it. Apparently, everyone was out in a deep coma for most of the night, including all but two guards who got overpowered by mysterious attackers. They were not killed, luckily, but bound and gagged. They were freed when others woke. What's strange, boss, is that apparently they took nothing. No cargo, no valuables, no coin, nothing. Well, almost nothing. You should talk to the Death Oth Acolytes. They came too a few minutes ago and are pretty antsy about what happened. You get up and almost fall and then vomit noisily. Blech. You might want to be careful there, boss, your crew member adds. It must have been what we ate. Everyone's been hung over and wishes there had been a feast. <laughs> Go talk to the Oscolites after you have pulled yourself together, of course. Just as dawn, just, it, wait, sorry. It is just dawn outside and the light is returning to the bleak world ponderously. The pounding in your head and churning in your stomach abates somewhat. A few minute mouthfuls of water you chug down helps a lot. Your crew greets you with sunken eyes and pale faces, but it looks like everyone is all right, including the two guards that got taken out by the attackers. The two fellows had a brief scuffle before they realized everyone else was knocked out and went down themselves, and claimed that the enemy was a group of mercenaries who were expecting little resistance. They wore masks and moved fast. The Oscolite novices stand in a circle when you approach them, and you can see immediately that they are one man short. It turns out moments later that they are also missing something crucial. They have taken the master's body, their leader, the senior novice, calls called in our size, and it appears that our missing brother was in cahoots with whoever these attackers were. We found signs of mandrake root that must have been used to poison us. Their target was the sacred corpus in our keeping, but we have no idea why. They look quite hopeless, and it already starts to stick to you as well. They took, they took what you were supposed to defend, and they used foul trickery. What do you do now? Uh... No need to investigate? Look around for clues. Tracks are soon found leading into and out of the camp. It is clear that the attackers were relatively small in number, but used fast mounts to enter, deal with the two guards who were not poisoned, grab the body, and leave with the traitor novice. There were a dozen mounts from the looks of it. The novice who helped them took all his belongings, but seems to have been in a hurry, so some of his things were left behind. 
There's not much among the Forsaken gear that points to anything. Mostly clothes, tools, a jar of embalming fluid. Amongst the personal effects is a stone-carved medallion depicting a circling snake-like thing with the image of a warrior in the middle wielding a spear, which is which seems which seems to skewer the worming creature. The novices have no idea what it means, but it certainly is no Oscolite symbol. The rest of the search turns up nothing, and the two guards cannot remember anything that would give the attacker's identity away. You might have an idea what the medallion means. Because we know of Lavendius. I don't. I don't. But my character does, thankfully. The symbol on the stone medallion depicts Lavendius, the hero of myth and founder of Sunrock. Oh! Dude, we learned about that guy so long ago. In the process of slaying the Cyclopean worm-like creature called Tessalat Maximus, the inhabitants of the town still pray to the hero who was sainted by the Triumvirate to draw him into the official imperial worship. Wait, Inara says following the explanation. That is interesting. My master's family hails from Sunrock. So does Lehis, another novice adds. The traitor whose medallion this is, I guess. You consider this. The tracks of the attackers have left also point in Sunrock's general direction. This is very, still very little, you realize. Probably nothing to follow through. But it seems to be the only clue you are going to get. No point in wasting time further. You have to decide what to do and break camp. <laughs> Just kill them! <laughs> oh man, how ruthless that is. You have come to some kind of a decision regarding the corpse theft. On the one hand, your job is to deliver the body to the Oscolites in Devon. On the other, there is no mention of hunting down thieves who inexplicably snatched up a dead man from your care. The novices naturally suggest looking for their master's remains and the thieves who took it. We might not have a lot of time to do it either, Vagris, Inar confides. I'm afraid any kind of trail might go cold soon. Uh, yeah, we can do this, I think. Promise them you will find their master's corpse. Hey! You promise the novices that you will aid them in their quest to track down the culprits and retrieve their master's body. They seem cheerful, for Oscolites at least, and start to pack immediately so that the Comitatus can break camp as soon as possible. Time is of the essence, Fagris, Inar tells you. Perhaps you have some ideas about where to look already, but do know that whatever we do, we have to be quick about it, else the trail goes cold and our master will be lost to us. If that happens, well, we'll have no choice but to report our failure in Devon. The Comitatus moves on. Cool. Well, let's move. We'll stick to the road. I know they said that the people, like, beelined directly for Devon, but I think you would be faster... It would be faster if we um, went, followed the road. They said check the qualities. There's so many qualities, though. Confounding discovery? Nope. Oh, yeah, we didn't hear about any more about those humanoid insects that were around Devon. No. This one? Nope. <laughs> oh, here we go. Corpse thieves. Found a medallion. Sigil depicts Sunrock. So let's just go to Sunrock. That seems like the best plan to me. Let's rest up. We'll zoom on past... Uh, uh, What's her name? The old witch lady. I almost said Kreefta, which is not correct. That is a companion of mine. All right, full vigor. And then we'll be able to force march in just a second here. I think I missed out on some movement there. Oops. And we'll make sure that we uh, pop into Devon here and drop off the supplies that we picked up. And then get more food. Because we'll be pretty close to empty. By the time we get there. Because we're on five days now. Probably one more day of camping before we reach the city. Yeah. Dude, perfect generation of uh, stamina there. Always good to see. Alright, into Devon we go. 
smuggle in the goods, house license, drop off all the stuff, do do do. There, eight days worth, and then let's grab anything that has to do with Sunrock, if there is anything. There's some. There's some more. And some more. And some more. And some more. Dude, so much stuff. And then before I forget, let's get the reward from the... Uh, ooh, eliminate the competition. Thank you. And then eradicate the undead. 25% combat strength against undead is so good. Not that I really fight undead all that much. Considering I've I've loaded up on so many Oscolite charms. But let's do a fast... Uh, or a forced march here to, to Sunrock. And I think we'll get there. Maybe one more day of camping. Yep. Honestly, wasn't even close. <laughs> Alright, so we've made it. Let's drop all this stuff off. Free money. I've talked about it before where the, the trail between Sunrock and Ash and Devon is a good way to make money early in the game. We're above 10,000 now, so we don't even have to think about it really. Um, okay, before we go back, we'll pick up some more stuff. But let's go try to find the thieves of the necromancer's body. They could be here somewhere. Just as you are about to leave the Manzio, Inar, the senior Oscolite novice, walks up to you. He is smiling, which in and of itself gives you pause. Your hunch was right, Vagris, he says, his grin growing wider. The master's remains are here in this very town. I know this because I have sensed his presence. You inquire how that is possible when it has not been before. It is a proximity thing. Most of us has a, have a contract of binding, which means we have a glyph of binding on our bodies. Normally, necromancers and priests can sense glyphs in their vicinity if they concentrate a little. I'm not that skilled, but I can still sense the master's glyph if I perform a small ritual, and I am fairly close, like, say, in a mile or two from the corpse. As it happens, I decided to perform the ritual every time we enter a settlement or come to a frequented area, and by the gods, I'm glad I did that. You could have mentioned this a while ago. You might be able to follow in our sense of the glyph to the corpse, but you know nothing about this, its location or who is around it, so you have to be cautious. Inar acknowledges this too. I know it might still be risky, but this is our chance. We have to find the master soon. Who knows when the body is moved, or... He seems to go paler, though you thought it might, it might impossible. Or you thought it impossible. Destroyed. Go after the thieves right now. After gathering your companions, you are joined by Anar and his fellow novices, all visibly excited about the prospect of reclaiming their late master's corpse. They are lightly armed, but according to the head novice's sense of the glyph, the location of the body is well inside the city's bounds, and so you do not expect a battle. You set out, with Anar leading the way. You don't expect a battle, eh? And then they're like, immediately choose your companions that you'll do battle with. <laughs> uh... Yes. Your party follows Anar through the winding tunnels and cavernous halls of the city, taking sharp turns and descending on occasion. The head novice, novice stops and prays sometimes, and then reasserts himself and leads on. It is after almost half an hour of wandering and a good deal of doubt about Inar's abilities that you arrive at a quiet part of the town that could be best described as a tumble-down poor neighborhood. An abandoned tunnel leads into a spacious and murky hall, sparsely lit by the light stabbing through the holes in the roof. It is immediately clear that the, that the place is a graveyard. Tombstones jut out of the uneven ground, and loculi dot the walls in clusters, shelving the bones of the deceased. The novices and your companions sneak closer, and can now make out a small group of people gathered in a circle near the center of the hall. The graveyard seems untended at best, with broken graves and displaced bones. It is clear that the poor neighborhood has no funds to care for their dead properly, not even to pay a caretaker to guard the remains. Yet such terrain provides ample cover, and the group in the middle seems occupied enough with whatever they are doing that getting closer undetected is fairly easy. You are edging closer, but still cannot see much. Suddenly you can make out chanting coming from the middle of the group. That's... 
Funeral rites being performed, says Anar in a whisper, and you can see that this somehow scares him. What do we do? Have someone properly skilled scout out the place. Use magic. Barge in. Let's use magic. I love using magic. The magical scrying reveals that nine individuals are standing around the corpse of Opiter Lucius Herculeus. None of them appear to be magic users except for a very small imprint on the man who is leading the funeral rites, probably because he is invoking a divine prayer to bless the burial. This is it, Inar comments quietly when you hear the report. It is them. They are trying to bury the master. But why? I do not understand. We have to stop them, Vagris. It is not the will of the great king. Barge in without further delay. Making sure that nobody else is here, your group reveals itself to the people in the center of the graveyard. You approach them without obvious harmful intent, though you keep your hands near your weapons. These people might have poisoned, attacked, and robbed you in the middle of the night, so such caution is only natural. Judging from the shocked look on the face of the novice Lehus and his cronies, you know that they have no, had no inkling anyone would interrupt them, especially not you. You glance at the group and see that seven of them are clearly mercenaries, a ragtag bunch of cutthroats and hired blades, while the last of them is a well-dressed woman who stares silently at you. Her features, clothing, and jewels set her apart from the rest, though she is no by, by no means very rich and does not look like nobility either. In the center of this ring, formed by her group, is the corpse of Opiter on a bone catafalque dressed up in ritualistic robes in all honesty he looks quite good for a long deceased man although you recall that he had already looked half dead when you first met him a stone sarcophagus in the ground has been prepared for him close by the tensions are almost palpable in the moments of silence that is finally broken by the woman i must ask you to leave she says calmly this is a personal matter and you have no place here stranger please leave before this gets out of hand her voice is calm, but you can see that her stature is tense and her eyes are darting from the novices to you. We cannot leave, the Inar tells her. You have taken our master from us. We have a d duty to him to the Church of Oskul to deliver him to Devon's necropolis. You you dare talk about duty, Inar, Lehis butts in, now seething with anger. You have no idea what he wanted, but you know what they are going to do to him. You failed as a pupil. Get the F out of here before I make you. So you think that the corpse theft and poisoning folk is what the master wanted? Inar's cheeks are flushed now. He looks more alive and animated than you have ever seen him. Clearly you have failed the master, our church and our god as well. The mercenaries are getting twitchy and the novices seem to be nervous as well. Please, the woman says vehemently enough so that everyone looks at her. Please, everyone, just calm down. Let me explain what is happening. That This last bit was clearly aimed at more at you than at an R. <laughs> Carissa, no need to explain ourselves. Lehis shakes his head in disbelief, but the woman silences him with a look. A quick and nasty look. Keep everyone calm and listen to the, what the woman wants to say. You tell the woman that you are listening. All right, just everyone calm down. She manages to make the mercenaries ease up a little. My name is Carissa Lucia. I am the eldest daughter of Opiter Lucius Herculeus. I am indeed responsible for snatching my father's remains from your care, Vagris, and I apologize for it. I did not want anyone to come to harm, and I believe that nobody has just yet. But you see, I had no other recourse. The church and my father's pupils would not respect his wishes, and those of his family, except for Lehus, who has been working with me for a long time now, preparing for the deed, if you like. Lehis looks still furious, but he confirms what she said with a nod. The church wished to allow him to continue his beloved research and teaching, Inar says Inar. Surely you cannot rob him of that. The church wanted to re resurrect him, Lehis spits the words, without leaving him any choice in the matter. And I know for sure he never wanted to return in a blessed form. He was chosen to be among the greatest, Inar raises his voice. What he means, Vagris, Carissa tells you, is that the Oscalites wanted to grant my father a rare boon, to exist beyond death, to come back as a sanctified undead, but do not be deceived by their ap apparent magnanimity. They found my father's research and talent too good to let it go to waste, to let him rest. I cannot allow them to do what they planned, so please leave and let me bury my father in peace. And we are sworn to take him to our superiors, says Anar, and looks at you intently. Carissa is also waiting your response. Convince both parties to look into what Opiter really wanted. Yeah! We're so... we're so... charismatic. 
Taking care not to escalate the matters further, you acknowledge the family's wishes and also those of the church and the great king himself. It would all it would appear there are that these are in opposition. You then remind everyone that there is a way to consult Opater, however, and it would be most prudent to do so, given that it is his soul's future in question and that neither party is truly in possession of the knowledge of the necromancer's wishes. Everyone seems to ponder this while the mercenaries stand about waiting. Would you be willing to do this? Carissa asks Inar quietly. Yes, of course, says Inar with a sudden decisiveness. Whatever you might think of us, we loved our master. We want to honor his wishes. Come with us to Devon. The priests there can summon his spirit from the underworld, and we can learn what he wants. If he wishes not to return, I will back you up against the church if need be. But it would not be an issue. We respect the will of the dead. Then we shall accompany you, she says and bows her head to you. But Lehis starts, but Carissa sp silences him with a look. Trust me on this one, friend, and trust your master, she tells him, putting a hand on his shoulder. The novice nods in defeat and starts to prepare the body for transportation. His fellow pupils join to help him quickly. We will pack our things and join you shortly, Carissa tells you, and you can see a faint smile on her own kind face. I really appreciate your level-headed approach. Worry not, we will take our own supplies, and my men will guard my father on the way. You give her directions to the Manzio, and then take your companions and leave them to it. Carissa arrives at the Manzio a half hour later with her bodyguards and the body. Hell yeah! Dude, we're so... We're so good at convincing people. This is like one of the first times I can remember being able to be like, Nah, all of you are wrong. I'm in charge. Um, so yeah, we will pick up next time and go to Devon and see what we can uh, glean from the end of this, this quest. But for now, if you guys enjoyed the episode, please click the like button. It helps me out a lot. If you want to see more episodes of Vagris the Riven Realms or the other videos I have going on on the channel, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you have your notifications on so you know when the next videos go live. But until next time, everybody, I hope you had a good one, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, everybody!